Talk a little bit more about what uh, Matt was talking about there and what both Buck Showalter and Bob Melvin kind of commented on in their pregame sound. And that was specifically for Showalter, the use of Edwin Diaz earlier in the game than some fans might have been ready for, longer in the game than some fans might have been ready for. However, it was an elimination game last night. They end up winning. At what cost today? Where does that put them at for game three? Well, it puts them at a huge disadvantage, if you ask me. And, you know, on the broadcast last night, watching Coney and, and Eduardo both had different takes on this. Eduardo was happy that Diaz was in the game, and, and Coney was kind of questioning it. I questioned it. It was 8-9-1 for me, and DeGrom was off his best. I'm probably trying to extend him there, Matt, because I think Diaz, Adovino, and Lugo, if this were normal situation, these guys are all out. And you see here DeGrom, that sixth inning was his best inning that he pitched all night. It, you know, from <laughs> got back to the fastball, and it was at 99 pitches. To me, if you're going to win a World Series, you're going to have to stretch out because tonight, Diaz, Adovino, Lugo, on a regular basis, they would all be off. You're going to have to ask them in a huge spots tonight to come up big with sore arms. It's a disadvantage, big advantage Padres late, Ruben. I think the Mets put a, a lot of eggs in the basket of, of DeGrom and Scherzer. And if DeGrom does not pitch more than six innings in one of these big games, then it does put the team at a disadvantage. I understand why Buck would go really early. He, he cannot lose this game. And their bullpen has not been as lights out. The one guy who has been lights out is Edwin Diaz. And you saw that uh, last night. Now they finished off the game. They got it done. Uh, they got their W, uh, but but at what cost? Now, now I would love to have seen Jake go longer, as Jake uh, as Jake Peavy just just noted, and and that's exactly what you should be expecting from your aces. They should be going seven, eight, nine innings in these situations. And I know that he's only what he's gone seven innings, what twice in his 11 starts that he had prior to this. That's right. I just don't. I, to, to me. He's got to go longer than that, and I'm not sure if he begged out or what the situation was, but for me, I wish that guy was, was well, pitching a few more let, innings. Let me ask you is this, because we all know and respect Buck Showalter a lot. He would not have not had a plan in place for game three, right? You mentioned it. He had to win last night was an elimination game. He wasn't going to get caught with his pants down with right. nowhere to turn to tonight if Bassett's short. Jake, you and I were talking about this earlier. They put Taiwan Walker on the roster before yesterday's game. He's only pitched in the postseason once. It was five years ago. Didn't go well one inning. But he's got to have a plan for tonight in case he can't go back to back on the group we just mentioned. There's no doubt. Buck Showalter is as smart of a baseball man as we have in the game. And I believe that is spending time with him. He's got a plan. I don't know if that plan was in place last night. And like I said, he's. Today, and they have sat in that office, I can promise you, since early this morning and figuring it out. I think Taiwan Walker is the best late inning option. But again, you're asking a starter to do something and come in a game. And we saw Kluber try to do that yesterday in Cleveland. And a starter is used to walking in out of that bullpen, high-fiving and starting a game. You ask Taiwan Walker to get in a big spot, you may see too much. There's just some unknown there. I think he can get the job done. But again, you're just looking at Diaz exhausted. Buck did a great job of throwing us off that question. I promise you Edwin Diaz is some kind of sore today. I know how this, these bullpen guys feel. Adovino is sore, 35 pitches, and his confidence is a little bit shaken because he didn't get the job done. Lugo is now on two days back-to-back. -back. You wouldn't do three days and sore. Yeah. Your best three guys, when Bassett's out of this game, are not coming in feeling well. Munoz yesterday, back-to-back -back days. These are high-leverage situations that are emotionally and physically exhausting, and it's going to catch up with you at some point in time. I'm like Ruben, would have seen him like to stretch out DeGrom. It was 8-9-1. I heard the reason for Grissom had a good, but you got a one-run lead there. I'm riding my dog a little bit longer if I had that choice. And, again, there's a lot that goes into it. But. Yeah, Manny, it's, it's all hands on deck. For me, it's about, you know, sometimes you got to have somebody step up. Ivaldi stepped up uh, and pitched in the bullpen uh, for Boston. You had uh, Chris Sale, you know, closing off yep. games. Somebody's got to step up, and I know that there's a plan, but this is baseball. Sometimes it doesn't work out. you got to use the best guys you possibly can, and it's about makeup. If you feel that guy can pitch in the eighth or ninth, it doesn't matter whether he was a starter or a reliever. Uh, you got to toss him out there. In the postseason, you got to ask a little bit more of your guys. You can't play it by the regular season book. If you're going to win a world title and host a trophy, you're going to earn it, and your guys are going to have to put 
some big time. Not, this is not directed at DeGrom. This is every team across the board. You get your hot hand. You ask a little bit more of them to get to the top of the mountain.